Apple held their peak performance event today, and after everything that they announced, I must say that I am impressed. Hi, welcome to Zigacho Review. Apple held their first event of the year. And a lot of times these events don't give us a lot, you know, little small changes in small places. So I'm going to go ahead and break down everything that once announced and we'll see what it is that that huge announcement was. Apple opened their event with Apple TV Plus and letting us know that they have a bunch of movies and TV shows that have been nominated for awards or have won awards. They also gave us a quick teaser of the movies that we can expect. Well, not really the movies, but the actors in the movies and TV shows that we can expect in the future. And one of their biggest announcements related to a, uh, Apple TV Plus is that they are going to have live baseball games. They're calling it Friday Night Baseball. And the announcement is that they're going to show two baseball games each week whenever baseball actually starts i mean right now they're not agreeing to terms when it comes to contracts so if baseball does resume this year you can expect to be able to watch baseball games on apple tv plus i'm feeling it's a little bit of apple dipping their toes on live tv to move away from just being a streaming service and probably becoming a service that also offers live TV. And why wouldn't they do that? It, it makes sense that they will do that, especially with their Apple base consumers, that they could integrate live TV somehow within their devices and within their ecosystem in ways that other companies cannot. So I feel that this is the beginning of Apple offering live TV services, but only time will tell. After that, they moved on to announce new colors for the iPhone 13. You're going to have Alpine Green for the iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max and Green for the iPhone 13 and iPhone 13 Mini. The devices are going to be exactly as any other iPhone 13, except that now if you want green, you can buy it in green. After that, they moved on to an announcement that we weren't expecting, and that's the return of the iPhone S. E. That will technically be for Android users what the Pixel put the number followed by the letter A amounts to, a budget-friendly device from Apple. The iPhone SE is going to have the latest A15 Bionic chip. It is going to lose out on Face ID, so now you're going to have an actual home button and it's going to have a fingerprint reader in the home button. The device is going to measure 4.7 inches. It's going to have the same type of glass that the iPhone 13 and 13 Pro has on the front and back of the device. The device is also going to support iOS 15 is going to come in three different storage options 64 gigs 128 gigs 256 gigs the device is going to be 5g compatible the device is going to start at 429 dollars available friday for pre-order and then is going to ship in march 18th of course this device makes a lot of sense for apple uh, iPhones are, for the most part, pretty expensive devices, even if you go with the smallest iPhone 13. So it makes sense that Apple will be going back into the budget-friendly devices in order to attract other consumers that cannot afford an iPhone. It's a device that is budget-friendly for people that can afford a device that is that expensive, and it kind of gives you the same qualities of the main device, but with some compromises. So this is one of the new devices that Apple has announced today. We also got an updated iPad Air, but this isn't going to be a lame iPad Air. This is going to be an iPad Air that is going to include the M1 chip. It's going to have the same chip that you find in the Pro model. It is also going to include 5G antennas. The device is also going to have a 12 megapixel camera. And of course, it's going to have 
center stage. The big thing about this also is that it's going to support peripherals through its USB port. So the iPad Air goes from being a, let's say, budget-friendly, kid-friendly device to being a device that you can actually take on the road. So it, it makes it so the iPad Air becomes a more useful tablet than it was before. The device starts at $599 for the 64 gigabit storage option. Having the M1 chip, as we have seen on previous iPads, is pretty powerful to allow you to do pretty good amount of work. The device will be available for pre-order on Friday and it's going to be releasing on March 18th. So now let's move on to the biggest announcement on this event and that goes to the M1 Ultra. That is the newest chip announced from Apple today. We had the M1 Max that was announced last year and that was a beast of a chip. Well, now we have the M1 Ultra. The M1 Ultra technically is two M1 Max chips joined together to give you double of everything. The two M1 Max chips come together in what they're called Ultra Fusion, which is where you get the name M1 Ultra. The beast of a chip is going to include 20 processing cores, 64 graphic cores, is going to support up to 128 gigs of memory. The chip has a crazy amount of transistors, make that 114 billion. And this M1 Ultra chip is going to be powering the newest Mac in the Mac. Mac family called the Mac Studio. This is a device that is being targeted to creative people. This is supposed to allow you to do a lot of work faster and without any hiccups. Again, if the chip lives up to its promises. What they're saying is that M1 Ultra chip is going to be 3.8 times faster in terms of CPU performance than the fastest 27 inch iMac and 90% faster than the Mac Pro. The M1 Ultra can do something that no computer in the world can do, of course, according to Apple's marketing and that is running 18 streams on 18 streams of AK ProRes 422 video. The Mac Studio is going to be fairly small and the reason is so you can put it away somewhere so it's not in your way. The device is going to have four Thunderbolt 4 ports, a 10 gigabit Ethernet drive, two USB-A ports, HDMI connection, of course as you can see Pro Audio Jack. On the front of the device we're going to get two USB-C ports and yes, a SD card reader because this would not be a creator's device without an SD card reader. The Mac Studio starts at $1,999. It's going to be available for pre-order today and is going to release on March 18th. Now that price is uh, for the M1 Max chip the 1999 pricing if you want the m1 ultra chip well that's going to cost you three thousand nine hundred and ninety nine dollars and of course if you're a content creator or a creative who is going to go with the mac studio then that means that you need a monitor to go along with it and of course it isn't included in the box all right no that uh newest monitor that apple will sell you if you want it to go with your Mac Studio, is going to cost only $1,600. Of course, it's going to give you the best color accuracy. It is going to include an A13 Bionic chip. And why would you need an A13 Bionic chip in your monitor? Well, it's because it's going to have a camera along with a mic array that is going to allow you to have the best, crispest, nicest video calls in the world. Well, I'm just adding that in the world because, you know, why not? The $1,600 monitor is going to support 5K resolutions. It is going to come with a stand that allows you to tilt the monitor 30 degrees. But if you want their special stand, 
which allows you adjust the height of the monitor that is going to cost an extra $400. Oh, and there's another optional thing that you can add to this monitor. That is a premium nano texture glass option that allows you to reduce glare. That is going to cost you an extra $300. So if you decide to go with a $1,600 monitor with the height adjustable stand, with the nano texture glass that is only going to be $2,300 before tax that is. Now when we speak about the Mac Studio always the prices uh, kind of get out of hand when it comes to these devices. One, well one because Apple is makes expensive devices. The other reason is because the Mac Studio really is targeted to people who have, I will say, more of a company, more of an enterprise need when it comes to uh, the kind of uh, content creation that they do. This isn't tailored to someone like me who makes videos and, you know, does uh, pretty simple edits. Buying one of these Macs will be overkill for the type of work that I do. But for someone who does animation and, you know, gaming, gaming creation and things like that and, and edits movies with different special effects shots and things like that something like this makes sense which is why it's so expensive but if you're interested in what it will cost to max this out we have the information thanks to cnet over ten thousand dollars like ten thousand three hundred dollars for this thing so some of these announcements are pretty cool i am excited about the ipad air this is the first time i've ever been excited about an ipad in my life will i get it i'm not gonna get it but for the average person i am excited for you if you've been looking forward to an ipad air that you can actually do stuff in if you're a person who's been dying to get your hands on an iphone but cannot afford a crazy expensive iphone then the iphone se is for you it is an exciting time right now when it comes to all of these companies making their own silicon which wasn't something that had been thought of before what do you think about the announcements from apple are you excited about what they announced are you scratching your head on why will anybody pay over ten thousand dollars for a computer you have any other comments or thoughts let me know in the comment section that is it for me go ahead and subscribe give us a thumbs up it really helps the channel Go ahead and hit that bell so you can be alerted every time we have new videos. Thank you very much for watching.